excited are you about this event? Look at all the people out there, it's fantastic. You know, it's a sea of people. Uh, the O2 this weekend is going to be absolutely banging. And of course, we've all come to support our boy, uh, Anthony Joshua, hoping he puts the show for us and sends us home with a massive smile on our face. But I reckon this could be one of the best heavyweight fights we've seen for the last 15 years. Two unbeaten young bucks, no disrespect, old man. Uh, two unbeaten young bucks, <laughs> fighting for a world title, and they're both bangers. So I think we're going to get a complete drama tomorrow night. Glenn McCrory, you've worked with us for a quarter of a century now. You've seen some of the biggest heavyweight fights in history. Of course, you, you spar with Mike Tyson back in the day. Lennox Lewis, you followed his career. Tyson Fury last year beating Vladimir Klitschko, a huge triumph. How big a moment will it be if Anthony Joshua can pull this off for British boxing tomorrow night? I think it'll be one of the, the biggest moments in British heavyweight boxing in the last 20 years. I think it's the start of a journey. And I started on my journey with Sky Sports with Lennox Lewis as a, as a youngster all those, time, all those years ago. So I think this could be as exciting, even more exciting than the journey that Lennox had because I think Andy Joshua is a, is a great, great fighter. But I think this is a very, very tough fight that may, may, hopefully not, but may just have come a bit too soon. But we'll, we'll soon find out. That's our Shannon Briggs, former two-time world champion. Here he is. He's, hey, Jeff, looking, how you doing? he's looking for a fight. Anthony Joshua's here. Charles Martin. David, David Hay first. David Hay's coming as well. Yeah, you know? David Pratt. Where you at, David? Come out, David. You're looking for your champ. Champ! You're looking for everyone. Let's concentrate on Martin and Joshua. We talked on Monday about how excited you are about the fight. What do you think happens? I think it's going to be a great fight, champ. I think it's going to be a great fight for boxing, a great fight for television. And, um... It's going to go to the next level. I think it's going to bring heavyweight champion, heavy, heavyweight championship back to its uh, you know, prominence. Joshua starts as favorite. How good is Charles Martin? How do you see it unfolding the fight? This is going to be a battle. It's going to be a tough fight. People are sleeping on, uh, on Martin. They, they haven't seen the best of him. They haven't seen him at all. He's a southpaw. He's dangerous. He's very, very relaxed in the ring. This could be dangerous for Joshua because he's a very tense fighter. So we're going to see it going into the later rounds. If Martin can get past the first four or five rounds, I think it's going to be trouble for Joshua. But it's going to be a great fight. Yeah, you think it has the potential to be really explosive and it will come down to the last man standing. That sort of dramatic fight. I feel like, you know, Martin coming into, to, coming into his house with all his fans, the pressure's on him. But if he can stand up, if he got some real nuclear in his chest, some atomic energy, he's going to fight his butt off. If he's got some nuclear energy, nuclear champ. that's what we need. Nuclear champ. Let's bring Spencer yeah. Oliver in. You've seen many of the great fights over the years. Spencer, I know you're a real analyst and, and you've looked at the tactical uh, strengths of both yeah, fighters. But, um, How do you see this uh, unfolding Saturday night in the O2? Well, uh, I agree a little bit with Shannon. I think that if um, Charles Martin can take um, Joshua into the second half of the contest, then we've got a fight. But can he do that? I'm not so sure. I think that Joshua's style is perfect for um, Charles Martin. I believe that Joshua will get the job done and then get it done inside the distance. Now I know he hasn't boxed any southpaws as a professional but he's had a great amateur career and that will stand him in good stead and I think the last fight against Dillian White will stand him in good stead as well because he had to come through some sticky moments and that's good and that's put him in the right preparation for this contest so I believe that Joshua wins a fight and wins it inside the distance. Kevin Mitchell, great to see you. What a fighter Kevin was. What great fights he gave us here at the O2. Recently retired, and doesn't he look well? Kevin, I uh, was speaking to Charles Martin earlier today, and one thing he mentioned to me was his chin. The fact that he's never been, according to him and his camp, wobbled, hurt, down as a pro, or as an amateur, or in sparring. And psychologically, he believes that's an advantage going into this fight. Having seen Joshua hurt against Dylan White and stopped in the amateurs, what would you say to that? I just think he's going to struggle with basically Joshua's hand speed, his fast movements. I've watched him fight this, this kid, and he's, he's a good fighter, he's not a world champion for, no, for nothing, but he makes clumsy movements. So I think when he makes clumsy movements, Joshua basically jump on that. I don't see it going past four rounds. Four rounds for Joshua. I fancy he could go early. I think he could, he could go up. Like, I'll find a bet. I'll back one or two, but I, 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 I fancy inside four rounds. Jo <laughs> Johnny, Johnny, I, I, Johnny, I'm sure, I'm sure everyone here is, is 
obviously very pro Anthony Joshua. You spent some time with Charles Martin in Big Bear. What did you learn about him? Because there seems to be a mystique about how good he really is. He and he and uh, Anthony Joshua are actually cut from the same cloth. Um, when we filmed the gloves are off, uh, it's the things you didn't see. Uh, behind the scenes that uh, are uh, really telling about both fighters and Charles Martin tried to step up to Anthony Joshua to say listen this is no game and you can always sense when someone's talking a bit of BS these guys are for real and that's why when they get in the ring to fight there's going to be no nonsense no pretense I do believe that uh, Charles Martin fitness wise is, is on point when I saw him up there I was so impressed with, with how much fitness work he was putting into it but so is Anthony Joshua his loose language uh, um, southpaw style will create problems for Anthony Joshua but Anthony's speed should be the key speed is always the key but, but Charles Martin has that slick boxing style which always gives most fighters a problem and that's what uh, Anthony's got to cut down and cut down quick Glenn you mentioned uh, Lennox Lewis of course we've had Frank Bruno in recent times David Hay and now Tyson Fury <laughs> really flying the flag for, for Britain. How good can Anthony Joshua become? And do you think when this is all said and done in a year, two years, three years, that this heavyweight mix at the moment, that he's going to be the one that's standing? I think tomorrow will tell us an awful lot, but certainly what he's done in such a short time to, to become the Olympic super heavyweight champion and then in such a short time to to be here fighting for the IBF heavyweight championship of the world shows that he's made fantastic progress he lives the life you know he's got a dream he looks in in perfect perfect shape looks fantastic so I think he could probably be the the best of them all if if he can get things right but I've been around Tyson and he's Tyson in his early days and we never thought Mike Tyson would ever lose at that point, you know, when he's fighting Terrell Biggs and Larry Holmes. But then he went on and it became a car crash. So it does happen. We've seen Lennox get knocked down. We've seen lots of fires happen. So, you know, he's got to be on his game. He's got to be at his very best. And he's got to fight a smart fight. He can't let his emotion get to him because, you know, he's stepping up a, a level here. So he's got he's to fight his perfect fight. But I think he could potentially be the best of them all. Shannon, obviously you're here, you're chasing the, the big fights. What's the word in America about the British heavyweights, Hay and Joshua and, and Fury, about the fact that you have come over here to call them out, show something. It's uh, it's all happening this side of the pond at the moment. 100%. Right now, you know, it's like the gold rush. Right now, you got to come to England if you want a title. If you want to you make something happen, you got to come to the UK. And that's why I'm here. It's like the great gold rush. And that's what I'm here for. I spoke to David Hayes, people who've been speaking back and forth. I'm going to fight on his card the 21st. If, if he signs to fight me afterwards, that's the case. It's an if. There's no signatures yet. No, no, we're going to fight for sure. We're going to fight for sure. You know what I'm saying? You just got to sign the fight. That's it. Let's go, champ. <laughs> I'm Josh, we're looking great. I'm looking forward to it. One more guy I want to ask you about is Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder. Course, you know, he's a WBC champion. He's, not, he's a fraud. He turned me down for $2 million. Sorry, champ. <laughs> He's a, he's a fraud. He's a fraud. Okay. Phony baloney. Enough of that. Now. Someone who wants to be a fraud, let's bring him up. Former super middleweight champion of the world, Woo! Carl Frotch, Woo! is here. Woo! Carl, good to see you. Um, obviously, a massive night for British boxing tomorrow night you mean i know chatting to charles martin's trainers yesterday and, and you're trying to sort of sum it all up and, and where your, your head obviously is thinking joshua and he could be this star how difficult to fight is this for aj saturday night tactics wise first of all great turnout thanks for coming i remember this place when i boxed kessel in the rematch always a fantastic crowd here how tough is this fight for joshua against martin this is a tough tough fight this is his this is his acid test and it's for a world title so he now needs to step up everything step up his fitness step up his his boxing brain in the ring and he's probably going to need to fight for a few rounds as well and it will probably go late unless somebody gets caught this is heavyweight boxing joshua could get caught early martin could get caught early don't rule that out if mike tyson can get knocked out trust me anybody can get knocked out but um this this is just going to be it's going to be a fight that is almost unpredictable. Yeah, if you're going to ask me, Joshua's my friend. I think he's a fantastic gentleman. 
I've trained with him for years. So my heart is growing with Josh. I think Josh does the business. I'm not going to tell you how yet. I'm going to save that one for the viewing public at home. But um, I think Josh does the business, but I don't think by any stretch of the imagination it's going to be easy. It's going to be obviously an electric atmosphere, something you sampled here, as he said, against Mikel Kessler. It's become AJ's fortress. From being around Charles Martin and, and his people, do you think it's going to get to him, or do you think he's going to relish the chance to perform and defend his title on this sort of a stage? I think when Josh won the title, he wasn't gifted it, but he didn't really have to work for it as much as he would have probably liked to. As a fighter, you know, you want to go and take that title. And um, with Glasscock's D going in round three, I believe it was, he would have gone home then with that belt and thought, OK, I'm champ, I deserve the shot, I've now got the belt. But this for him now is his world title fight. So I think he's going to turn up here, away from home, in against somebody who's got this whole bandwagon behind him, this whole British public, and rightly so, because Josh is one of them kind of people that you want to get behind, you want to see him do well. Um, Olympic gold medalist, world title fight, first world title fight, he only his 16th fight, so he's still very much a raw novice in professional boxing terms. Charles Martin will not be turning up to lie down and give his belt up. That belt will probably be in his bedroom, and every morning when he wakes up, he'll look at that IBF belt, beautiful red and gold shiny belt, and he'll think, you know what, I'm champ, and I want to keep that belt and take that back with me, so expect fireworks. Finally, obviously, you and George Groves also on the bill here, of course, tomorrow night. Change the perception of boxing in this country with the, the huge night of Wembley. Is it a case now of, with Fury and with Joshua and with David Hay that we can have these monster nights in the open air again over the next couple of years? Are we talking about 80,000 fans at <laughs> the Wembley Stadium? <laughs> or 79 and a half. Of course we can have them nights. That, that fight there proved then that's going to happen with boxing and, and when, you, when you've got the right fight that, that sort of gets into the imaginations of the public you know the public are going to turn out I mean the Wembley Stadium what a fantastic venue an outdoor venue for a boxing match a tiny ring in the middle of the football pitch filled up around I mean it's unbelievable and of course we've proven that could happen and sure it can happen again we've got David Hay we've got Tyson Fury we've got Deontay Wilder who made travel the heavyweight division is getting big now it's getting excited and um you know, why can't that happen again? I'm sure it can, especially with Joshua involved. The heavyweight division's flying. There's so much as well ahead for you tomorrow night. Two world title fights. Jamie McDonnell, Lee Selby. We've got George Groves, Connor Benz debut. Nigel's boy, how exciting is that? What a trade dust up as well between Matthew Macklin and Brian Rose. That could be fight of the night. It's all happening. The boys will be on the scales for you very, very soon. My thanks to Kevin Mitchell, Spencer Oliver, Glenn McCrory, Johnny Nelson, Carl Froch, and the one and only, let's go champ, Shannon Briggs. Thank you very much.